Yo! Video games. Oh god, it's got some weird shit going on. It's a ROM thing. Mm. I remember the shit looking. You have to look at a finished game. Real good. Beautiful picture of, Beautiful. of Janjo. Mm. We're going to have to fire up the Donkey Kong rap at some point tonight, too. Janjo, we have the N64 on. Janjo Bango. There's any way for me to skip this shit. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Audios generate. I'll fix it. Yeah, much nicer. Enter chat. Yeah, like look at look at this shit. Look at this huge map and stuff. There's no there's no N64 fog. Yeah. Mm. Like that's the big one is that wow, you can see everything. There's an actual draw distance. Like holy holy shit. This game can't even run without the expansion pack, right? You see that? that no, I don't even no think audio. it uses it. But it needs it to function, right? I don't think so. Which was the game that needed? Is Donkey Kong? It's Donkey Kong. Donkey yeah. Kong. It didn't even use the expansion pack, but needed it to function. Right? It needed it to because there was a fucking glitch they found last second. Oh, uh, shit. A game ending glitch, and they noticed that the glitch didn't occur if the expansion pack was in. So they basically told everyone that the expansion pack was required for the game. But they didn't have enough time to to patch it out. Yep. Um, couldn't do that shit back then. Well, they could just you know. Just delay it. Yeah. Oh, no, just delay it. This is an online patch, you know, day one patch. This is easily the best at looking in 64 game. Like, easily. Pretty solid, yeah. I'd argue this looks better than the majority of even PlayStation 1 games. Yeah. Just in terms of scale of the map and everything like that, it's pretty nuts. There's not like the warping and the shit on the textures and crap. Yeah. You think Perfect Dark looks better? No. <laughs> <laughs> Simmons would be resident expert on that shit. Yeah. Mm, no. Yeah. So. Outside of like Nintendo with Mario 64, did Rare pretty much perfect the 3D platformer? Yeah. So, and that, because they had like what, three 3D platformers on this system? Yes, three, I believe. Banjo 1, 2, and DK. DK. Oh, and Conquer. Oh, that's true, yeah, Conquer. Rare made a fucking. This game, this system didn't last very long. Rare made a shit ton of games really fast, dude. Yeah. They made Conquer. They made they made Banjo one and two. They made. Jet Force? Uh, they made Jet Force. Yeah. They made Jet, Jet Force, Force Gemini. They made Perfect Dark. They made Goldeneye. Yeah, they made Jesus their library Christ. goes Blastcore, Blastcore, Ki Gold, uh, and then Goldeneye, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, Banjo Kazooie. Death Force Gemini, DK64, Perfect Dark, Mickey Speedway USA, Conker's Bad Fur Day. I believe that's all the... And, and that was within, of course. That was in like five years of the yeah. system living. 96 to... They put out like uh, 10 fucking games in five years. To they were they were They were like almost single-handedly keeping this system alive. Yeah. They really were. Like, like, Nintendo had their games, but it was yeah. like... Dude, okay, tell me, outside of the Zeldas and Pilot Wings yeah. and like Mario, Mario, yeah, oh, yeah. Mario, what the fuck else is there on the N64 from, from Nintendo? Oh shit, for Nintendo, they have like Wave Race and that's and, true. Uh, uh, F Zero X. F Zero X very much went under the radar. Yeah. Because honestly, F Zero X runs at a awesome. F Zero X runs at a good frame rate, but it is a rough looking game. It is like it honestly looks worse than 
like wipe out at times. It's like, whoa, this is very simple. Oh, Mario Kart, that's true. Yeah, Mario Kart was fucking huge. And then Smash Brothers. Yeah, I guess I am I am forgetting a few. Star Fox, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, those were all huge ass games. To me, 1080, I remember look that game looking stunning. 1080 looked good. I remember 1080 looked really looked good for stunning the time. on a Nintendo 64. I'm like, damn, this game looks insane. Clown balloons, thank you, dude. No mercy. Paper Mario started on N64. I guess you're right. Yeah. yeah. The all the, all it the was wrestling late, games. Though. And was Mario like... Party. You know, I'll shut the fuck up. Yeah, N64 did have some pretty damn killer apps, but it was... A big part of it was, I guess, Nintendo and Rare. Bro, those No Mercies and WCW games? Mm. That was a multiplayer heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a multiplayer machine. Yeah. Oh, well, I remember at the time... You know, the, the common knowledge when I was in high school, or, you know, or, or people in, you know, whatever group were like, N64 is the game, the machine you play with even your friends over, and PlayStation is what you play when by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Goddamn right. That's a fucking There really stellar. isn't a ton of games that are actually good that support that four player adapter on, on Play PlayStation. Yeah, no. On PlayStation 1. You're goddamn right. And in all honesty, outside of sports games, there's not a ton of Dreamcast games that really well utilize all four of its sports either. There's some. A few. Dude, that shooting game and Power yeah. Stone 2. Out Trigger, you yeah. know? Out Trigger. Uh, Animal Crossing two. was originally on 64 in Japan. We have it on here. We yeah. can play it. Damn. I think it was a 64 DD game, but I think somebody got it working. Yeah, no, I don't think it was 64 DD. It was supposed to be. Look at the lighting and shit, man. There's like actual shadows being cast and stuff here. Yeah, yeah. It's nutty. Yeah, they knew what the fuck they were doing with this system. And considering they were like the pioneers of graphics on like the SNES as well. Like Donkey Screw. Kong and KI and shit were like, what the hell? This is possible? Yeah, I remember... Remembering like Donkey Kong Country, like, dude, this was like some PlayStation shit. Yeah. You know, it looks like I'm playing a damn, damn near PlayStation game. What is not just permanently my disc drive? Yeah, exactly. That was 64 DD was weird because it was just like bigger cartridges, basically. Yeah, they, they could they... be rewritten though. Oh, oh, that was the gimmick. That they were, the they were actually spinning discs on the inside? They were just zip drives, but they could, oh. they could, you could rewrite the memory to them. So, like, they could be technically updated. It did connect to the internet in Japan. Yeah. Um. I see no dialogue like the other game. No. Yeah, um. So, yeah, I could connect to the internet in Japan. Like, the idea being that, like... Rogue Squadron, it, yeah. You could have like an N64 cartridge on top and the disk drive in the bottom. The disk drive could take the memory from the N64 game but change it. Mm -hmm. So like you would get like a remixed Zelda, like you get like the Master Quest for oh, like shit. Ocarina of Time, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, those were the things they were proposing and never happened. Like they had a bunch of Mario Paint N64 games come out in Japan. Never came out here because the Net 64 DD never came out here. Yeah. And to me, the weirdest thing about the whole 64DD thing was that, okay, it never came out anywhere but Japan, and I'm like, nobody bought this system in Japan. Yeah, that's the weird, weirdest part is that they would, once again, ja the Japanese bubble, right, yeah. with this industry, is that we're going to try to market this towards Japan, Some, their system's failing here, so we're going to put this hardware upgrade on it and make it more expensive. Yeah. For just the Japanese audience, it's, it's like, what? It's it's very bizarre, because it's like... Japanese bubble hype. Just yeah. one of the worst, you know... It had almost no games on it. Yeah, so... I was like, who are they selling to? Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, it's a good uh, four-player um, Vigilante 8 for Dreamcast. It's a good four-player game. That's like Twisted Metal, right? Yeah. Oh, I love it on N64, but the frame rate... Yeah, 64, you, know, you played on player. Dreamcast. Yeah. Was the North America first? made up 60% of worldwide N64 sales. Yep. Europe and Japan was only 20%. Yeah, Vigilante wow. 8 Second Offense on Dreamcast. Jesus. This system only did well in America. Only did well in America. Mm. 25 million of its 30-some-odd million was North America. Jeez. And how many Switches have been sold now? 
85. Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Switch is about to pass 100 million? Yeah. And it's only been out for four years? That's Thank insane. You. Oh, and that's about to maybe pass it at the end of this year. Oh, shit, that was too far. Never mind, that's not a four-player yeah. game. Yeah, they're expecting to do 30 million this year, so they're expecting to get to 115 by April 2020. That's nuts. Yeah, there, there's weird, there's weird like, demographic successes. Like, N64 and GameCube uh, did well in the U.S. Yeah. Did the GameCube do well? It did okay in the U.S. But it, it, did, okay. it did the best in the U.S. I don't think it did well in Japan or Europe or anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, I think GameCube did better in Japan than the N64 did. Oh. So that's not saying much, but... Oh. But, here's the thing. Overall, the GameCube actually sold worse than the N64. Yes, I remember that. GameCube yeah. was a failure. Like, it was a failure, which is, it's just kind of weird to think, because people probably have more nostalgia or, or... For GameCube or, stuff. Or probably think the GameCube did better than it did, and it's like, no, it did worse than the N64. Like, you gotta understand, like, because of GoldenEye, because of a lot of rare multiplayer games and shit like that... It was the only it, thing that kept the kept, system... It kept this, this system going, like... Like hard mm -hmm, yeah. in North America, which again is another one of those like, why the fuck was Japan you know, almost... so focused on on fixing their 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 country when it's like all their their only market was here? Yeah, that, that's the that's once again like the the Japanese bubble mindset that we talk about so much, where they they focus on their market and not where their market <sighs> where they're getting success, which is outside of their country, yeah, right? Um, it's like the Saturn, right? Yeah. Where the Saturn was insanely popular in Japan, but nowhere. Nowhere else, like yeah, completely yeah. bombed everywhere else, so and Sega's because like, we're happy, and be and there was a shit ton of Japanese Sega Saturn games because yeah. of it that never arrived here. But that's not enough to carry the system. Like they needed yeah. worldwide sales, which is why they had to like move forward from the Saturn so quickly uh, to the next console. Yeah. So it's it's funny how how the industry has like taken such a huge change now, where America is the biggest market by far. For almost everything. Tell me there's a KI reference in here. No, it's, there's Jeff sure. there's Gemini references in this house. Yeah. And now, like, even companies like Sony are, like, super America-centric, where yes. pretty much the gaming division of Sony is now in San Francisco. Uh. Yeah, I think Microsoft buying out Rare probably was a pretty big detriment to the GameCube. It People was, like, and, and Nintendo, apparently a lot of it had to do with... Rare was like kind of flabbergasted because they, the Stampers wanted to sell their 51. Nintendo had 49% stake in the company. Oh. They actually could have made PlayStation games if they wanted to. They were not owned by Nintendo. Yeah. Damn. 49% owned. But anyways, the Stamper brothers were like, they're going to, they want to retire, so they were going to sell their 51% stake of the company. And they're like, we just assumed Nintendo was going to buy it. And then Nintendo was like, no. They're being cheap. Yeah. They're being cheap. This the same shit happened to Final Fantasy. Literally the exact same thing happened to Final Fantasy, where they just didn't... It was like, we, we had thought we had a thing here, and Nintendo just doesn't follow up, and they're like, well, Sony's being very nice, so yeah. fuck it. Final Fantasy VII's now on PlayStation. Yeah, so so they were like... And apparently, from what I've heard from some people who were more in the know, Nintendo was a little bitter at Rare, because they didn't have a game ready for GameCube's launch. And I was kind of like, well, neither did fucking you, really. <laughs> like, look, I'm sorry, Luigi's yeah. Mansion was your launch title? And they, like, and they put, they were putting two games out a year on, two huge games out a year on yeah. the N64 consistently. And and they thought that, they, and apparently Nintendo thought, like, Ninten Nintendo's feeling was that, like, Rare was getting a bit prima donna, where, like, they, they overvalued themselves Good Lord. Uh, a little too much. So... Yeah. They weren't. They just weren't interested. You know, here's the scariest thing. There's a. There's an alternate world, because we know Microsoft is the one who ended up buying them. Sure. But do you know who the 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 person who was right behind them who lost the bidding war it was Activision. <laughs> if Rare still existed today in that alternate timeline, they'd be making Call of Duty. They'd be in Call of Duty jail with everyone else. Rareware making Call of Duty games. Yeah. And it, the crazy part is that they didn't just buy, like, Rare as a developer to start making new games. No, they bought all the IPs. Yeah. They bought all the individual Rare-made IPs that were not Nintendo. So, obviously, they don't have Donkey Kong and shit. Yeah. But Banjo and Conker are suddenly Microsoft characters, like, yeah. overnight. Mm. 
This looks great. Let's try something else on N64. Hey, yeah, what is it? Let's like Kenny. Let's like Kenny. Select, select your destiny.